The Amityville Horror is a chilling tale that began in the small town of Amityville, Long Island in the early 1970s. The story revolves around the Lutz family, who moved into a seemingly idyllic Dutch colonial house on Ocean Avenue. Little did they know that this house would become the center of a terrifying supernatural ordeal. Welcome to As Told by Bells, where mysteries unfold, the bizarre becomes reality, and strange stories come to life. I'm Bells, your guide into the world of the unexplained. Every Sunday, we'll delve into unsolved mysteries that continue to baffle, and tales so bizarre you won't believe they actually happened. To stay in the loop with every captivating story, make sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and ring that notification bell. Trust me, you don't want to miss a single episode of these extraordinary stories we're about to unravel. Now let the storytelling begin. Ronald Butch DeFeo Jr.'s story begins in the bustling city of Brooklyn, New York on September 26, 1951. He was the firstborn to Ronald and Luis DeFeo, a seemingly average American family residing in a comfortable upper middle class neighborhood. Ronald Sr., a successful car salesman, provided for his family, albeit with a heavy hand and a temper that often boiled over into heated arguments with his wife and children. As Ronald grew, it became evident that he was the target of much of his father's frustration. The young boy struggled with weight issues and faced relentless bullying at school, which only exacerbated the tension within the DeFeo household. Despite his parents' attempt to intervene by taking him to a psychiatrist, Ronald vehemently denied any need for help, rejecting the notion of therapy. The DeFeos, in a bid to pacify their troubled son, resorted to showering him with gifts, including a lavish $14,000 speedboat, hoping material possessions would ease his inner turmoil. However, these gestures only seemed to escalate Ronald's downward spiral. By the age of 17, he had descended into a world of drugs, including LSD and heroin, and was eventually expelled from school due to his violent outbursts. Ronald's behavior took a darker turn when he attempted to shoot his own father with a 12-gauge shotgun during a heated altercation, showcasing the depth of his inner turmoil and resentment toward his family. He actually pulled the trigger at point-blank range, but the gun malfunctioned. His surprised father ended the argument but was left stunned by the confrontation. Despite these warning signs, the DeFeos continued to indulge their son, providing him with a coveted position at his grandfather's car dealership and a weekly stipend, regardless of his performance or attendance. In 1974, Ronald's dissatisfaction with his life reached a boiling point. Feeling resentful over what he perceived as a meager salary, he concocted a plan to embezzle money from the dealership. The dealership entrusted him with the responsibility of depositing more than $20,000 to the bank. Collaborating with a friend, he orchestrated a mock robbery. The plan went off without a hitch, only for the scheme to unravel when police became involved. Ronald's violent tendencies resurfaced during the ensuing interrogation, where he explosively refused to cooperate with authorities. It was then that Ronald Sr. began to suspect that his son had committed the robbery. But when he questioned his son about his lack of cooperation with police, Ronald threatened to kill his father. On the fateful morning of November 13, 1974, at around 3 a.m., Ronald carried out his darkest deed. Armed with a 35 caliber rifle, he mercilessly slaughtered his entire family as they slept in their Amityville home. His siblings, Dawn, age 18, Allison, age 13, Mark, age 12, and John, age 9, had been killed by single shots while the parents, Ronald Sr. and his mother, Louise, had each received two shots. 
Physical evidence suggests that Louise DeFeo and her daughter Allison were awake at the time of their deaths. Ronald DeFeo eventually pled guilty to the murders and was sentenced to six sentences of 25 years to life. He was serving his life sentence in Sullivan Correctional Facility until his death on March 12, 2021. The brutal murders of the DeFeo family sent shockwaves throughout the community, leaving a haunting legacy that would linger over the property for years to come. Despite the tragedy that befell the DeFeo family, the house at 112 Ocean Avenue remained vacant until December 1975 when George and Kathy Lutz, along with their three children, Daniel, age 10, Christopher, age 6, and Missy, age 5, unknowingly stepped into its dark history. Their arrival marked the beginning of a new chapter in the saga of the Amityville horror, and they soon found themselves ensnared in a web of supernatural terror that mirrored the tragic events of the past. On December 18, 1975, as the Lutz family was in the process of moving into their new home, a Catholic priest reportedly visited to bless the house, allegedly at the request of Kathy Lutz. During the blessing, the priest described feeling an unexplained chill in the sewing room, which struck him as odd given the pleasant weather outside. As he sprinkled holy water, he claimed to hear a deep voice behind him commanding him to get out. The experience left him startled, especially when he felt what seemed like a physical slap, despite there being no one present. This eerie encounter marked the beginning of the family's purported paranormal experiences. As the Lutz family's harrowing experiences unfolded, they encountered inexplicable phenomena that echoed Ronald DeFeo's violent past. They would experience foul odors that would come and go. They would hear strange sounds and the front door would slam shut in the middle of the night. It would be considerably cold and would linger in the house for many, many days. To combat the cold, the family resorted to keeping the fireplace burning continuously yet warmth remained elusive. Adding to the surreal atmosphere, they discovered peculiar gelatinous drops on the carpet each morning. In moments of sheer terror, George recounts witnessing his wife undergo a startling transformation, her appearance aging rapidly to that of a 90-year-old woman, complete with wrinkles and gray hair. The haunting occurrences seemed to synchronize with the infamous time of 3.15 a.m., coinciding with the DeFeo murders. George himself found that he would inexplicably wake at this hour almost every night, further deepening the sense of dread that permeated the house. One harrowing night, George claims to have been rendered immobile in bed, hearing the eerie sound of his children's beds slamming against the floor above. Trapped by an unseen force, he could only watch in horror as his wife appeared to levitate and glide across the bed, adding to the surreal and terrifying experiences that plagued the family. From mysterious odors to disturbing visions and encounters with demonic entities, their ordeal bore eerie parallels to the darkness that had consumed the DeFeo household. Desperate for answers and relief, the Lutzes sought the help of renowned paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren. The Warrens' investigation confirmed their worst fears. The house was infested with malevolent forces beyond comprehension. Fearing for their safety, the Lutzes made the agonizing decision to flee their home, leaving behind everything they owned in a desperate bid to escape the evil that lurked within its walls. The legacy of the Amityville horror endures as one of the most infamous haunted house stories in history, captivating the public's imagination and inspiring countless retellings in books and films. While skeptics may question the validity of the Lutz's account, 
the chilling tale continues to send shivers down the spines of those brave enough to delve into its mysterious depths, serving as a haunting reminder of the darkness that can lurk within the human soul and beyond. Thank you for joining me on this journey into the mysteries of the unexplained. Remember to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on every captivating story we uncover. Until next time, keep your eyes open and your mind curious. Stay tuned for more stories from As Told by Bells.